Hello, everyone. I'm going to read a short piece from a work in progress, and the context is that this work is done in reaction to the archival holdings at Trinity College Dublin relating to Samuel Beckett. So the approach I've taken here, the themes that I'm interested in are, uh, are Beckett's obsession with compulsively returning to the very banal landscape that he grew up with, and some of this includes Fingal, where I'm from, and the fact that after undergoing psychoanalysis in his 20s, Beckett claimed to be able to remember being in the womb. So it's a short excerpt, but those two elements should make, it, make some sense to you at this point. Uh, the working title is Fingal. It opens with a quote from Charles Prentice, who was one of Beckett's publishers when he was sent one of Beckett's stories, Echoes Bones. It is a nightmare. In a documentary about hallucinogens, a man with obsessive compulsive disorder describes a therapeutic trip on LSD, which showed him dying and becoming a corpse, subsiding into earth, recomposing as a tree. His family in the vision stroll by the dirt-grown tree. OCD as fear of death, of death's contamination, dirt as vibratory liberty. We fly to Norway for an art biennial, a CGI reanimation of the deceased American rap star Lil Peep speaks through gungy pixelated teeth. Don't people know, he grieves, that I am dirty ashes now. Every Ash Wednesday, priests rub cooled grit on the forehead. Remember, man, thou art but dust, and to dust thou shalt return. I love the incidental, inexpensive archaisms of mass. At a conference, a woman reads a poem about another woman burned to death in a dumpster and sees, conveys this woman's cradled remains glimpsed as echoing with flesh. Picture death, a baroque, even aristocratic event awaiting all of us, however plain. Thoughts like this make one's problems, a commute, pain, keen flashes of domestic panic seem shameful, gauche in perspective, but I am pregnant and I never worry about that at all. I feel a small, taut sphere growing with such deceptive slowness, opening by inches like the face of a sunflower in my belly, and it gives me no trouble whatsoever. Bearing life does not dispense with or dim the subject of death. I seem to be susceptible to terrible news stories more than ever. I'm still dying myself, technically, but some cellular supplement or excess agitates within me and becomes, by week 21, a kicking squiggle on the ultrasound screen. My daughter moves around so much, the nurse cannot get a gestalt or a picture of her. There flashes a femur, like a sudden incandescent tensile quill. There shines a spine, precisely like a fossil print. One angry eye socket surges into view suddenly, and makes my partner and I gasp. Yes, they can be skeletal at this stage, says the nurse, except she pronounces it skeletal, extension of E sound, somehow seeming tacitly possessive of the skeleton, like funereal, of the quality, the quantity of funerals. Earlier at eight weeks, I'd asked, pointing to the screen, and is it facing us? There came a beat before the nurse replied, right now it doesn't have a face. Samuel Beckett in Saney's, in his early 20s, biking from Fingal back into Dublin and then home to Kuldrina, the house in Dalky where he was born, with a pop with the green of the larches, those particular trees which recur and reoccur in his writings like a jingle, like an EDA fix, like an obligation, like a periodic expulsion of waste matter or gas, like a habit. Beckett biking in Saney's through familiar territory. And this is a Beckett poem, not mine. All the live long way this day of sweet showers from Portran on the seashore, Dunabate, sad swans of turvy swords, pounding along in three ratios like a sonata, like a ritter with pommeled scrotum at Tracura on the step, Botticelli from the fork down, pestling the transmission, tires bleeding, voiding seep the highway, all heaven in the sphincter, the sphincter. And this is back to me. Pastoral pales to piss, as usual. Birth trauma, the interuterine, is one of those preoccupations of this early Beckett, a person I always think of as the inky-fingered, unhappy undergraduate who might, for example, carve fetus into a table in the lecture hall. Further Saini's Beckett again. 
Ah, to be back in the call now with no trusts, no fingers, no spoiled love, belting along in the meantime, clutching the bike. Back to me. No trusts, no fingers, no spoiled love, no face yet. A longing for this claustrophobic, thoughtless space. Portran appears again in a letter to Thomas McGreevy. This is Beckett's letter. I was down at Dunabade on Boxing Day and walked all about Portran Lunatic Asylum in the rain. Outside the gate, I was talking to a native of Lambay and asked him about an old tower I saw in a field nearby. That's where Dane Swift came to his mosh, he said. What mosh, I said. Stella. What with that and the legend about the negress that his valet picked up for him and the Portran lunatics and round tower built as relief work in the famine, poem scum is fermenting. The first flicker in the wash tub since the bitch and bones. End quote. In the footnotes of the collected letters of Samuel Beckett, this detail of the tower is glossed wrong. The Stella Tower is a Martello Tower built during the famine, it reads. It seems to be confusing three towers on the coast, in the part of flat and monochrome Fingal, in that part of flat and monochrome Fingal. The Stella Tower, the Dramana Martello Tower, and the Round Tower at Port Ram. The last one is a folly constructed in the 1840s, possibly with labour from the famine relief scheme, although not necessarily. In a swoop or a loop of indifference, three structures are blended into a single poetic shorthand, Anglo-Ireland, savage indignation, famine schemes. Poem scum is fermenting, and production, reproduction, indicated partly because of the Portran lunatics. To break up, decant its elements, is to observe the Stella Tower, or Portrain Castle reconstruction of the 1800s, and the Round Tower, folly, fake monastery, and the Martello Tower, Napoleonic, filled with cement now like a sandcastle, to fold the landscape out of this, to be bored or dumbfounded by ill-remembered heaps and wrecks, landscape a palimpsest we've lost the will to read, landscape as geophysical coagulant. I love this kind of thing. It might all be a dream. Three towers become consubstantial, become black vapid magnetic monolith from 2001 A Space Odyssey. Factory ship as Fata Morgana, Lambay Island as shark or ashtray, fermentation as cellular reproduction without women. Frankenstein. I'll leave it there. Thank you.